Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercrest, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play. This time around, it is Bugs Bunny, Lost in Time, for the Sony PlayStation 1. I've seen this game in magazine ads from back in the day. I've never really seen this game in action, though. And because of that, I had to play this thing just to see what it was all about. And as you can see, we have ourselves a 3D platformer on our hands. Brought to us by Infogrames, who also brought us Looney Tunes and Carrot Crazy for the Game Boy Color. I assume that Infogrames had the license to make Looney Tunes games after the early and mid-90s. When Chemco had a go and Sunsoft had a go after that. And I've only played a little bit of this game, and it's not too bad what little I've played. But of course, there's going to be a good amount to this game. This might be a long let's play. But let's go ahead and press start. And we have one free block to save with, so we might as well go ahead and continue here. We do not have a save file. Let's go ahead and create the save file. And we can make six new files. Let's go ahead and save right here in slot one. Now, I could start the game already, but I will show off the controller configuration. You can use the directional button to change from one of four configurations. Configuration one is the default, and that is the one that I will be using. Don't worry about memorizing everything just off this one screen, because the game does have a tutorial at the very beginning. So you will be eased into the game gently as soon as you start it. So, with that out of the way, let us now go start the game. doesn't look like Pismo Beach. I probably should have turned right at Albuquerque and... Ooh, look at the size of this carrot juice dispenser. Yikes. Well, this thing looks like a carrot juice dispenser. Might as well touch it. Oh, wait, it's a time machine. And just like that, we are now just traveling through time. Bugs pops up in a building, finds a time machine, and plays with it, and now we're doing time travel things. Okay. Well, here we are at the level select screen. You have nowhere to choose from, as well as one, two, three, four... Five, six, well, just five other places to choose from that we can't even choose yet. Nowhere is the tutorial level for this game, and we're going to be playing that first. So let's go ahead and select it and press X, and we will be on our way. And, of course, you get nice little loading screens. Sorcerer. Yeah? Really? A sorcerer? Come on, let me see a sorcerer. Huh? Please, please? Of course. Anything to oblige a guest. <laughs> you know, that's a good trick, my old goyle. Can you do this one? Still ain't near it to my natural habitat. Uh, 
sorry to interrupt this entertaining demonstration, but uh, can you tell me where I am? It seems that you are lost in time, my dear. Here, it's nowhere. Nowhere? And do you know how I could get back to uh, somewhere? Of course I know. You must go from one era to another and find symbols like this. They will open you new locations and will progressively lead you back to present time. All right. Listen carefully, Rabbit. Get ten of these objects to receive a clock symbol. That's it for now. Bye. Yeah, goodbye, Moyo. And we now have a task set in front of us. So, we need to collect 10 golden carrots to find or get a clock. And we must get a whole lot of clocks so we can find our way back home. What, is this Back to the Future for NES? We had to collect clocks in that game. But... We have clocks to find and clocks we shall get. So, we now have to look around and see what things we can do. Apparently, when we move around with the control pad and approach this chain, we learn how to jump. Press the X button to jump and use the directional buttons in the swinging chain direction. So just jump towards the chain with the jump button and the d-pad and you'll be able to climb up here but there's nothing over here that's because we haven't read the sign yet press the R1 button to get an answer to Bugs's question look up there's a sparkling object up there and now that we've read the sign the golden carrot will now show up so we're going to have to do the chain climbing again just to get this. To see the game status in the game option menu, press the start button to pause. And from here, we pause the game and we can continue the game. We can look at our options where we can set the music and sound effects volumes. Switch between stereo and mono and turn on and off the vibration of the DualShock controller. We're not going to do any of that. We're just going to go ahead and continue with the game. And a little something there. Not sure if you quite caught that. Maybe I should try that again. I do want to show this off as early as possible and explain it. When you walk off an edge, you don't just walk off. Bugs Bunny jumps off on his own. You can use this to your advantage, and I will talk about this a little later on. Anyway, let's go ahead and look for another sign, much like this one, and read it with the R1 button. You can move some objects using the push action. They can be used as a step to reach a too high ground or object. So, we need to get up there to get the golden carrot. While holding a directional button, press the R1 button to push the big box. So just move towards the box, hold R1 as you do it, and you'll be able to push this thing up here. But we still can't get up there. We need the boxes that are surrounding this big one to get up there. While holding a directional button, press the R1 button to pick up a small box. Press the R1 button again to drop it, or the square button to throw it away. Jump with the X button on another box and press the R1 button to stack them up. Thankfully, you don't have to hold a directional button unless you really want to or need to. You can just press R1 by itself and there you go. We can just jump up to this box with the control pad and the X button. And from here, we're, on, we're up there, but not quite. We're going to need another box. And by bringing this box up here, we should be able to get this. And that is another carrot 
or golden carrot taken. We need golden carrots to get through the levels, collect everything, and go for our best possible game that we can. I am going to try my very best to make this 100% playthrough. Just like I do with just about everything else that I play. In case anybody was wondering. And now, to pick up a carrot. We pick up two of these orange carrots so far. By picking carrots up, you'll be able to refill your health. And you can also use them to get other golden carrots. And now, for this high striker. You can use objects like mallets to bust an enemy. But do it fast. It works for a short time. While holding a directional button, press the R1 button to pick up the mallet. Press the square button to use it. It will be lost after the time is over. And we can use L2 and R2 to rotate the camera. Thankfully we didn't have to do that. But I will show it off anyway. And that clock in the lower left hand corner, that is the amount of time we have left to use the mallet. Once it reaches the very top, once, it, once the uh, hand on the timer points straight up, we are out of time. Now, we could have used that to defeat enemies, but, well, there's really no enemies to defeat, so the most we could do is just use it to hit the high striker. And you kind of have to be a little bit of a distance away from it to hit it, but as long as you're facing it and you're just a little far away and not right up in front of the high striker target, you can hit it and get the golden carrot on the first try. Anyway, let's go ahead and read another sign. Explosive objects like TNT boxes without injuries use the HEARS action to softly land on it. Alright. So, this thing. While jumping with the X button, press the circle button to land softly on a red box. You need to not only press it, you need to hold circle, not just press. And you need to hold the button until you land on what you're landing on. Don't forget that you have a shadow and you can use it. And you need to make sure that you wait until you reach the ground to let go a circle. Otherwise, you break straight through. You have to hold the circle button down until you land. Even if you're almost at the ground. If you let go before you land, you will go through the TNT box. Kind of had to show that off a little bit. Anyway, there is another sign near these trampolines. Let's go ahead and read that one too. Bounce on some enemies to reach inaccessible objects or grounds. And we can do that not just with the trampolines, but also with this little guy in a purple wizard robe. Just jump on the guy's head and there you go. And with that out of the way, shouldn't be long before you can also reach this one. Once again, Bugs Bunny has a shadow. Pay attention to it so that you know where you're landing. By hitting the little Merlin hat, get a checkpoint. And over here is the time machine. Press the R button, or the R1 button to get information. Psst, Bunny, find 10 golden carrots to go meet Merlin in this tower. He will give you the clock required to exit this area. When an exclamation mark or a question mark appears over Bug's head, press the action button. Good luck. And from there, we pretty much get an idea of what we need to do in case we are completely lost. There are directions here, but I will read this sign first. You can pick up objects and throw them to enemies. You can also pick them up, move them, and drop them somewhere else. And we've done that with the boxes, but we can also do this with things like fruits. While holding a directional button, press the R1 button to pick up an object. Again, you don't really need to use a directional button unless you really want to, or have to. Press the R1 button again to drop it, or the square button to throw it away. One moment. Okay. Had to cough there. I will have the mute the mic, or rather, edit that. 
We only need to drink this water real quick. All right. R1 to pick up the fruit. Square to throw it at this guy. There we go. We have another golden carrot. Seven of ten. And now, we're going to learn how to fight enemies. While you're running, try the ball action. It can be used as an attack against enemies. And from here, we can use the L button to roll while we are moving around. By rolling into enemies, we can hit them. Use the jump or kick action to defeat some enemies. Combine both actions for some other ones. Press the X button to jump on the apprentice's head, then press the square button to kick him out. So we need to get catch up to this guy and jump on him. Then he kick him while he is stuck in his hat. Psst. If you can't hurt an enemy when he's facing you, try to kick his behind. It could work. You could also try to tire him out first. When he stops, kick his behind, bunny. And this guy's gonna chase after us, so we need to run away from him. Run around in a circle here. When he gets tired, get behind him, kick him a square. And we have another golden carrot out of that. Special bonus points for this game being as Looney Tunes as possible and not using the word but. I don't think I've ever seen a loon an old Looney Tunes commercial where they said the word but. Not sure about the newer ones though. Anyway, let's grab a carrot. And there should be some things that we can still do. How are we doing? Okay, we're still 8 out of 10. We can go over here. This is where we're going to get our last two, I think. To avoid awakening someone, use the sneak action. It can also be used on fragile grounds. So, the sneak, hold down the circle button and move with the directional buttons. It should be mentioned that this game, I believe, has infinite lives. So, I'll be more than happy to show off what happens here. If you don't use the circle button, this happens. You lose all your health and you fall in the water and bugs cannot swim. Thankfully, we hit the checkpoint, so therefore we start over there. Do we have the read the sign again? I'll just go ahead and read it again and press start. Just to skip the cutscene here. Now, if you just hold circle, you'll crouch. But if you hold the directional button along with circle, you'll tiptoe. While you're tiptoeing, you can sneak up on this guy and kick him in the butt. And that's how you're going to beat some enemies. As well as get away from a few of them, too. Now to read the last sign. Jump and press the dive action over a rabbit hole to get under the ground. To exit, reach a hole, and jump. And now... To get to the rabbit hole to get some information. Press the R1 button while jumping with the X button to dive into a rabbit hole. To exit, align Bugs' ears with the rabbit hole and jump. So jump, press R1, and if you're lined up, you won't hit your head on the ground, which thankfully won't damage Bugs. While you're here, you can get on the fence just by moving around with the control pad. You can move under some things, but there are some things you can't move under. But you can move under this log, just go through the arch, at least and get the final golden carrot. Now to get out, we need to find the rabbit hole again. Once we get to the rabbit hole, our ears will pop out again, we press the X button, or whatever you have assigned for jump, and you'll get out. Now it's a good thing I held circle the entire time because one, apparently the game decided that was an edge that Bugs Bunny will walk off and jump off of as soon as we walk off the edge. And two, 
helicopter spin let me land safely you can only go straight down with the helicopter spin it's not like Dixie Kong's helicopter spin from Donkey Kong Country 3 or anything like that you can't really go down and forward gently with that move the only way you can go is down and down only and of course you can tiptoe with circle and the d-pad and circle by itself let you crouch now it is time to head to the castle which I believe is this way Pick this one up to start your quest. It opens the Stone Age era. Get in and there, choose one of the opened entrances. Visit all of them and get back all the hidden clocks they contain. Great! Thanks, Moyle. Anything else? Uh, yes. Of course, picking up carrots will raise up your energy. That's it for now. We'll probably meet again somewhere in time. Time traveling is one of my favorite hobbies. I'll teach more later, time traveler. Goodbye. Yeah, goodbye, Moyle. Collecting symbols. Well, why not? After all, they laughed at the man when he discovered the penicillin. So by going into the castle when you have 10 golden carrots, you'll get your first clock. Now that there's nothing else to do in nowhere. One, we can go up to the checkpoint and press R1. Hello, travel hair. Let me save your position. And apparently save our game. Interesting. Never thought that this was a Thanks, save. Boy. Never thought that this was a save point. That's something. And two, let's go up to the time machine and press R1 on that. And we'll get out of here. So once we leave nowhere, we can't come back. We will have to go to another area that will require one clock to go to. And that one area that we can go to is the Stone Age. So let us do that. And I'm surprised there's no loading anywhere. Just a straight shot from the map to here. If you see a vortex coming out of a rabbit hole, you can go to that area. When you approach the area, you'll get the name of the level, the amount of clocks that are there, and the amount of golden carrots that are there. You're going to be collecting a lot of clocks and golden carrots to complete this game. There is a time machine. And there is a dinosaur skeleton, though I don't know why. Well, you can't really do anything with that now, can you? All we can really do is just go to the one available level that is here and we have 2% of the game complete just a measly 2% we are going to play the first level of the Stone Age area and get more game completion percentage golden carrots and clocks but that will have the wait until the next video so join me next time where I jump down this rabbit hole and start exploring places until then this is Prince Watercress take care stay safe and thanks for watching